I was a psychological operations officer for the U.S. Army, a propagandist. I've even written a book on what I learned. This Veterans Day weekend, I've been thinking a lot about propaganda and its corrosive effect on our country. We are under attack. Reputable news outlets have documented more and more of the spurious websites and Facebook and Twitter accounts generated by Russian psychological operators for U.S. consumption. Here's an example. The Texas Tribune, a credible centrist paper, reports that Russians masqueraded as far-right activists calling for an anti-Islamic rally in Houston. They also masqueraded as a pro-Muslim group calling for a rally in Houston that same day. Outlets like Newsweek, The New Republic, or The National Review may not be aligned with your personal politics, but they have diverse alignments, and they have staked their credibility upon accurate reporting of the facts. Those outlets that wholeheartedly support Donald Trump have predictably labeled any concern over Russian online propaganda as itself misinformation because it erodes the legitimacy of Mr. Trump's election. Folks, that election is over. But the Russian cyberbullying of America goes on. This is not just some liberal conspiracy. They will continue to sow discord in our country, pitting us against each other. I believe their end goal is to provoke a civil war. The Russians would like nothing better. For those of you who support Trump, well, I don't. But I'm not here to talk about him. Further disclosure. I'm the third generation in my family's tradition to serve in the U.S. military. We're patriots. I served under George Bush and Bill Clinton. Didn't fully agree with either. I'm a centrist with no allegiance to either party. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm here to tell you honestly the way I see things as a former PSYOP officer. When I'm done, you're free to disagree. If after all that honesty, you're eager to dismiss me merely because I don't speak the language of your particular political or religious cult, left or right, well, you're one of the people ready to drink the Kool-Aid and feed it to their children rather than admit they or their great leader might be wrong. You're unsalvageable goodbye. For the rest of us, here's what you need to understand. If I were a foreign psychological warfare specialist, where would I attack? Sun Tzu teaches us attack not where the enemy is strongest, but where he is weakest. We know where the fault lines lie, the cracks in the foundation of our republic. 1. Economic inequality. I would seek to pit the poor against the wealthy and the wealthy against the poor. 2. Race. I would seek to pit minorities and immigrants against the dominant group, whites against blacks, blacks against whites. 3. Political division. I would seek to pit socialists and progressives against conservatives and Trump's populists. More importantly, I would paint the opposing sides, not as fellow Americans with whom I happen to disagree, but as enemies. Hatred against the left. Hatred against the right. Hate, hate, hate. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. 4. Gender. I would pit male against female, female against male, cultivating hatred between feminists and traditionalists. 5. Religion. I would sow hatred between Protestants and Catholics, Jews and Muslims and atheists until all sides despised the other. These divisions have existed in the U.S. for as long as I've been alive. But now we have foreigners masquerading as American conservatives and liberals pretending to speak as the worst caricatures of those positions and cultivating hate on the opposing side. I remember Joseph Goebbels writing in his diaries about a propaganda campaign he had created. The Americans will fight to the last Englishman. We must stoke up hatred. All right. So what are we as individuals to do? First, when you're on Facebook or Twitter, 
remember these Russian trolls, are still out there, is the person you're talking to, or whose homepage you're visiting, a Russian? Second, remember that everyone who's tried to discuss politics on social media within the last two years has been cyberbullied, they've been traumatized, and they're lashing out. They need reassurance and sympathy, not rejection and conflict. Once you've calmed them down, perhaps then you can have a real discussion. While Facebook, Twitter, and also Google have promised to respond to this unprovoked attack upon us, there are limits to what they can do. Frankly, I wish everyone in this country had read and understood my book, but beyond that, I wish everyone would understand that not picking up, reading, believing, or passing on enemy propaganda is everyone's responsibility. In the long term, the real answer is to address these weaknesses in our nation so our adversaries can't exploit them. But for the moment, the Russians will be back the Saudis, the Iranians, and the North Koreans will come with them. Do not fall for their tricks.